All right. Well, after that grandiose display of the Soviet Union campaign, now we're playing the Allies that are on the run, overwhelmed by the Soviet Union and hammed in by the Japanese. Just like on this screen, as you can tell, to the left we have the Russians, to the right we have the Japanese. The Empire on both sides, while well, democracy is in the corner huddling. Let's see if we can change that, shall we? Premier Chardenko continues to push his Soviet forces into Western Europe, seizing control of key regions left behind by the retreating allies. Great Britain now stands as the last European nation yet to fill the jackboot of Soviet aggression. That might be short-lived, however, as sources tell us that a vast Soviet armada has been spotted off the northern coast of France. Commander, I'm Field Marshal Robert Bingham, Chief of the Allied Military Command. I've been told that you're a very capable officer. Well, let's hope this assessment is correct as all our senior commanders are now fighting in Europe, leaving the defense of Great Britain entirely in your hands. I'd like you to meet Lieutenant Ava. She will be your intel officer and communications liaison. Glad to have you on board, sir. Field Marshal, the President is ready for you. Mr. President, I'd like you to meet our new commander on the ground. Greetings, Commander. You ready to send those commies running back to their mommies? I sure hope so, because if you don't stop them over there, the only thing standing between those godless reds and the U.S. of A is going to be one little ocean. I absolutely agree, Mr. President. We cannot allow the Soviets to secure a foothold in Great Britain. The fate of the free world depends upon it. I feel very confident in that, though I must say, the Russians... Especially if you're talking about Russia as a continent. Along with their Chinese allies and I would imagine Mongolia. They have a whole eastern portion that they could just go across and attack from. I mean, what's stopping them? I would imagine nobody knows about the Imperial Army, right? I mean, I am spoiling it for later on, but you'd figure they could go the opposite direction and not have to go through France and do anything. But I'm guessing they learned from Red Alert 2 and learned that the Allies would help the Americans if the Reds attacked America versus actually attacking the Allies. But in this case, without nuclear arms, they can't do anything to prevent the Allies from attacking them. So I'm guessing the strategy is just bulldoze them. Bulldoze them until you have to bulldoze the United States? Come on. Come on. Well, let us continue. Soviets have conquered much of Europe with brute force. Now, they are trying to invade England by attacking a virtually defenseless civilian city, Brighton Beach. Commander, we must hold the line and defend against the Soviet advance. If they take Brighton Beach, it's a straight shot to London. All of Europe will fall. We cannot let that happen. And I like this, the fact that if you look at this picture right here, where the Soviets have all of this. So they've got every, they've got Italy, they've got Spain, France, they've got the northern Scandinavian provinces, yet they don't have what Saxony would be, which is, you know, just this upper part, or this, yeah, basically the upper and lower part of Denmark, the upper part of Germany, and the other two states that buffer between France and Germany. And then you've got Great Britain. But the key points are... Uh, Greece isn't in. Greece is nowhere to be in. North Africa is nowhere to be in. Turkey is nowhere to be in. And Iceland is nowhere to be in. There's no allied presence there at all. Or at least they haven't signed on and said, hey, maybe we should do something about this. <laughs> I mean, if they've already taken Switzerland, I, if I was anybody else, I'd be looking at it like, we should probably join the allies. Just maybe. Maybe on principle. The Soviet Union is on Britain's doorstep. You must do everything possible to repel the incoming attack. Expect waves of Soviet forces to approach by airdrop. Unfortunately, we do not have heavy armor reinforcements at this time. You will need to find a way to complete this mission with the resources you already have. Good luck. 
Wow. Okay, so then we've got, looks like, attack from the ocean and then attack from the city. Look at that face. I like those brown eyes. Very the handsome. The beach is under siege by Soviet forces. The city must be liberated so we can bolster our defenses against additional waves. Hey, they're doing Crete. This is a great operation if you're doing Crete operation. Please make do with these peacekeepers and attack dogs for now. All right, good old attack dogs. They will be our first line of defense. Armor spots. Scanning perimeter. Standing by. Can use the peacekeepers on these puppies. Peace out. And something to note: when you play as the allies here, we have instead of actual rifles, we have shotgunners. Right here. Which, I have to say, is an interesting change of pace for what they wanted to do for the Allies. So much like I was talking about in the Soviet campaign, you end up having a little bit of change with your conservative estimates. Though I have to say, I don't care much for this change in particular. Because I still think, you know, if you have a rifle that is m that is far better than having what we've got here, which is just shotguns. But... I'm sure somebody said, well, why don't we just give them riot shields and they could use those riot shields. Clear for engagement. Granted, I'm not going to sit here and pull the argument, well, you know, video game logic where shotguns are less effective at range versus, you know, being closer. Granted that, you know, Buckshot is going to be able to be more effective the closer you are, depending on what you're hitting, well, certainly you could choke it and have a tighter spread for longer range. I just don't see a pump-action shotgun being very good. This base will be your staging area against the incoming attack waves. You have been assigned a co-commander for this mission. He will aid in the defense of Great Britain. Aren't you supposed to be... Quite a mess this is. Name's Giles, Commander. And I'm not about to let these commies secure a foothold in our backyard. I'll be right at your side the entire time. I would hope so. I would hope so. Let's see. All right, well... Soviets are closing in with an airborne force. It looks like they're going to paradrop into the city. We cannot let them take Brighton Beach. You must hold them off. Objective yeah. received. It won't be that bad. Training. Keeping the peace. That's affirmative. Let's see here. We do want to take some of these fronts. Been evacuated. Your inventory may garrison the deserted structures for protection. New bonus objective received. Board and cover. I have the tools. I know this part. Let us see. Training. Oh. Yeah, I actually Ready, something job. that has changed from the second red alert to the third one Ready, is sir. that Where's the, the garrison of buildings building. doesn't automatically guarantee you've got that area locked down anymore. Ready, sir. The trouble? Because it used to be where you just put your infantry in. They would hold those buildings and they would become this insurmountable object that you needed artillery to take out most of the time. Ready, sir. Where's the armor spots? And it was horrible. New bonus objective received. Fun, but horrible. What's the situation? Bonus objective complete. Kind of like real life. You always have to call in some air support or mortar team or somebody to be able to take that out. If you didn't have that, it's like, uh, how can we avoid these things? Studying blueprints. Hey there, command. Whatever you say, sir. Training. Hospital captured. Peacekeeper Bonus ready for objective contact. complete. And since I know what's going to happen later on, I'm making sure that I can actually capture these. It'd be great. On time as always. Also, something to note. I mean, this is a great introduction to a D-Day scenario, and I think this is their big D-Day scenario for Red Alert Three. Because we've got semi-fortified positions with cannons, but other than that, that's, that's pretty much the closest we ever get. And I 
honestly feel that it is always a waste. Because that was such a big Enemy moment for World War II, and you always hear about it, and you always Good see burn. stuff about it. And you could easily do that with this. Instead of doing the Crete Island campaign where it was like, hey guys, let's drop our troops over on Crete. Except, you know, instead of having having the obvious solution of... No! We lost our dogs. Oops. Stop. Let's see. Can we keep can we kick him over here? No? Okay, no, he's fighting. For some reason I don't know why these guys are not attacking. But yeah, instead of pitchforks, we've got dogs and shotguns. So, something more scary, but nobody thought of it. Training. More Soviet invasion forces detected. I mean, even without the Luwaf are there to tell you about it, I mean, come on. You'd figure people would have wisened up and said, maybe air wasn't as smart of a tactic. But it was a prevailing idea. It was, and it still blows my mind. In this game, it's a good idea to have a lot of good air. But in real war, you don't want to drop your forces in, like what they're doing with the conscripts. They're just dumping conscripts into the issue. I don't know why my ally does not take buildings, but. They dump these conscripts in, and thinking to yourself, well, this is obviously a good decision. Come on. Hello, capitalist dogs. I am General Krukov, the one who will bring you defeat today. Brace yourselves for the might of the Red Navy. We will pound your little island until you weep for mercy. Things are going well, but I fear that was just their first wave. Take those gun emplacements on the beachhead to help repel any more attacks that might be coming. Yeah, if that wasn't their first wave, I would have just sat here and clapped my hands and said, so why aren't we winning this war? I mean, if you want to just dump conscripts on me, hey, I'm listening, sir. I'm here if you need all for me. it. Engineering. Oh, hi. I can make a dash for two of those coastal guns if you'd like. No, I want them. I'm going to take them. Because I'm wanting all the glory that comes along with it. But you're applying so much logic to what... They're sending more, are they? Don't worry, I'm right behind you. Yes, applying logic to a training mission. I know a lot of RTS games. are now authorized in the defense of this area. Train them from the boot camp. Especially in the older games, received. you have those scenarios where people will constantly Train make the first level to be just this, I'm listening, sir. Right here. just this training level. And it used to work for stuff like, right oh, here. like StarCraft and WarCraft and Dune, right those kinds of games where you would figure out how to move units, how to do this, how to do that, but you, they wouldn't make it, they made it into logical sense. I mean, even when you had the first red alert, you had a simple mission for both factions. They're straightforward, easy, but they had a point to them. And this this has a story point, but it makes it seem like why aren't we winning this war? Like this does this isn't scary. This isn't like Command and Conquer Tiberium Wars where you've got like the third Tiberium War where you have the aliens being introduced. And how chaotic and scary that was. It already gives some dramatic effect to those factions. In this, it just seems like a duck situation. And <laughs> as you can tell, this is pretty pathetic. But I look at this and I think to myself again, was this scarier? Was this harder on an Xbox controller? Or was it equally as meh? Do you have your white flag ready, Commander? 
Because you, you could do a lot. You could do a lot with this game if it was, like, strictly PC, and I think it would have been maybe longer. But it being just a console... I think, I think it was a console idea and then ported to the PC mostly, because I can't imagine this just being a strict PC game. It's just too simple. Or, I mean, not simple in, in the, the positive aspect, more simple in the, oh, it's going to be pretty straightforward, the story's going to have some lack of emphasis or lack of something. Oh, come now. Come on, take the bears out. Take the take the bears out. I would appreciate if you killed the bears. That, that would be great. I understand you like fluff, but come on. Oh no. See, I feel like. Okay, well I've lost all those guys. I could put them in buildings. Is what I should have done. But, it is better, let's see. Additional Soviet naval forces inbound. Prepare for their arrival. It's better in this situation to go with what I've got. And I'm thinking maybe it's me not putting these guys into a certain attack stance. But uh, like I said, you don't automatically just waste the units. You click on it and have to force them to do it. And that bothers me tremendously. Because I can't imagine you sitting with an Xbox controller pressing A on all this, all of a sudden decide to say, well, I'll press A and, and, and command these things to do this. No, it's not going to be that precise. You, you know, a lot of this stuff would have to be handled by the AI or the game itself. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without a mouse. Unless it's going to be like... Oh, I... Unless I could possess a unit and then do stuff. Yeah, you, you'd be hard-pressed. And I don't even know why they gave us the cryo shot. I understand that the cryo shot will eventually become useful, but it's not as good as you would think. Select target. Let's Our see. Do think they'll be able to handle that? Awesome. Maybe. Get you back. Our ally is under attack. Now I'm trying to think what they're going to do. I think they're going to just run all the way down to this fortified location and attack it. Or, uh, okay, never mind. And they can just have the bears sit there and then we can just attack them there. Let's see if I can pull this off. I might be able to do it. Come on. Attack the bear. Can you, can you eliminate the bear? Come on. Don't get overconfident. This isn't over yet. Yeah, I, I for a starting mission, extremely easy. The Soviets are about to attack again, sir. Intel says this is the last wave, so hold your ground. This wasn't even that bad. This isn't even a scary build-up. And something nice to remember is that, unlike the Soviets where you place the building first, then you build it, instead we build, then place. So this takes the old style of how it used to be for all factions. Which was, you'd have... Only a set, or you know, you'd have two scrolling wheels, and then you'd oh click God, on it, or whatever you wanted to build, and it would take time, and it would build it. In this case, that's what the allies have now. 
and the Soviets have build on the ground, and then the construction happens. You'll see what the Japanese have when I get... Well, the Japanese have their own way as well. Which, granted, I like that small detail to have something different, but I think that kind of difference is negligible in the grand scheme of how this game is set up. And let me tell you, this mission does not do wonders for the story. <laughs> As you can tell, the mighty Soviet Union that has everyone on the run can only drop in bears and conscripts. I'm really scared. I'm very scared. Very. Very scared. I don't know how I'll sleep at night. Multi gunner hey at your service. Stay low. Multi gunner. And now I, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you see that? You see how that building is not attacking anyone? You see that? You garrison a building, it doesn't attack anybody. It does nothing. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Whatever you need. It's ridiculous. Hello. Hello. I'm guessing oh, maybe they thought, well, yeah, it's a little bit too powerful. It was very powerful in Red Alert 2, so I guess we should. Yeah, see, like that. They're succeeding. Oh, that aggravates me now. Because it's like, moments ago, I had problems. But then these guys up here, these guys in this building, in this civilian structure, all of a sudden take out those guys. No problem. No problems at all. None. None. That's ridiculous. I mean, are they telling me that there's only a certain viewpoint where they can walk over and do anything because you can't even tell where they're at you can't even tell where they're at in the windows or anything like that there's no descriptor or, or piece of information that i can look at and say okay my guys aren't looking this direction let's make them look the other direction and get this up. Yeah, and I think these are suffering. So these suffer from the same problem as the... Oh, as the Soviet helicopter. The twin blade. Which is terrible. I, I understand it's probably done for balancing, but... Oh, just sitting here cringing at the fact that they don't constantly shoot. It's like, come on. Tell me it takes them that long to load up two racks and then fire it? Come on. And this is the kind of stuff I was hoping they would actually start with. Like, you'd have a mission where you had a lot of these just bombing the city and then you could defeat them. Maybe even introduce Tanya again in the early portions to give more emphasis to special forces and the, the need for versatility in your in your troops. Or the versatility of your troops, I should say. And the need to understand the versatility that your troops bring to the table. So then we get this moment where... Stop. Here we get a moment where these guppies come out and they help us out a lot. Which, the, this is the scary, these guys right here. These, these are the dangerous ones. Kiro is gone. Get away from that explosion. And they will bomb those fortified buildings, and I just lost those guys, bro. Yeah. Almost. But I didn't, I didn't lose them all, thankfully. That one out. Swing by. And they're now turning around for some reason. I guess they're finally realizing, hey, maybe we should take these guys out. As you can tell, it's a little bit annoying trying to get these to fire. And sometimes you'll just be like, well, we'll sometimes fire. But you can't leave them in one spot because they will go crazy. And 
Yeah, I'm losing my buildings. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Just need my construction gear. Uh, you go that direction. Normally, these guys are supposed to bugger off, but they don't. Oh, come now. Come now. There we go. seems to be on your side. My army is needed elsewhere at the moment. But don't get comfortable. I will be back. See, now I could have built more and laid waste to these guys with rather. The Soviets are retreating, sir. You've done it. You've driven them back. Congratulations, Commander. Please. Yeah, it would have been more spectacular if it was dangerous. It's kind of sad. Oh, Giles, Giles, Giles. You should stick with street fighting. You were a terrible commander. <laughs> like, how do you get a 1.53 for your kill-death ratio? How does that work? I, I would imagine if I wasn't uh, fumping around like I was, I would have a better kill-death ratio just because I'm paying attention. But... You know, you fuck around, this is what you get. Uh, silly. But, nevertheless, hey, and I always look back at the games like these, always look at how they start out each campaign. And, like I said, this is probably the weakest story part, and the weakest in the sense if you've played games like this. If you have no idea what's going on, no idea about RTS games, none of this when this came out, sure, this mission works. And it's a nice tutorial of, hey, you want to check out your units? It's not as intrusive as it could be. It's very, you know, you do what you want to do for the most part, but we've got enemies that are going to put pressure on you to give you some kind of satisfaction. So... In comparison to something like Dune, where the first mission is harvest resources, so you'd go out and you'd harvest spice, and you get to a certain percentage of spice, and with a set amount of buildings to complete the mission, they would have units that would come in and harass you while you did that, but it was fundamentally a trial mission. You know, it was to understand the units, the basic units, the gameplay and what you're supposed to do much like this yet it fits in a good story wise because nobody trusts you thus far it would be a different story like if i was just a commander being tossed in here saying okay cadet or okay whatever my rank is and say hey, we want you to do this this menial job can you do this menial job and you do it you succeed at it great now we're going to give you another job more important you know have that slow build up instead of throwing me as the last line of defense, making me up to be some big character versus a big enemy, you know, because that's what you have to do. You have to build my enemy up higher than I am to make it seem like I have stakes in this. Make it feel like there's something going on, and they don't. It's like, <laughs> I, I granted, me as you saw me, you know, clowning around, and could I could have had more of those multi-vehicles driving around taking out those Kirevs and knocking those blimps out before they ever caused a big problem. I could have done that, but I didn't. I stuck with like a small amount of units and basically still won. It would have been cool if you had Kirovs constantly there and had missiles coming out. We push them back off the soil, we push them off the beach, and then, you know, they have that dramatic moment where of surprise and of like I earned this title instead of, hey, my enemy's incompetent enough to do Crete 2.0, drop their forces in on parachutes to be shot as they come down and then they're wiped out. It's like, come on. Come on. 1 800, come on now. Oh. It's hilarious. But hilarious in a different meaning, you know? Oh.